Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Maths Puzzles. I'm Matt Parker and this time we're going to look at Pascal's triangle. Oh, I guess, spoiler, we're also going to look at the number 3003 as a kind of extra, extra extension. We'll get to that at the end of the video. For now, Pascal's triangle, this is where you add the two numbers above each position to get the new number you fill in underneath and you assume that the triangle is in an infinite ocean of zeros, which is why you get the ones all the way down both sides. The submittable part of the problem this time is can you calculate for the first 128 rows what percentage of all the numbers in those 128 rows are odd. So if you go onto the Think Maths website on the puzzle page you can find the submittable form for this puzzle and you put in the percentage. So not a number between 0 and 1, I want the percentage between 0 and 100. So what percentage of those 128 rows uh, or of the numbers within them are odd? And also to clarify, a lot of times that top number, that very first one, is often the zeroth row. And then you have the first row, second row, third row, all the way down, which is handy because it means that the second number in is the number of the row. However, that first one is still a legitimate row. So when I say the first 128 rows, I'm going all the way down to the row that starts one 127 and so on. So uh, so don't it's not to the 128th row, it's the first 128 rows. I hope that makes sense. And the ones count. The infinitely many ones, uh, though you won't have infinitely many because we're stopping after 128 rows, they do count towards the percentage. The open part of the problem is what happens if you keep going? Ultimately, what is the percentage approaching? So I'm interested uh, predominantly in if people can work out for increasingly big numbers of rows what percentage of the numbers in Pascal's triangle are odd. So if you have any extra working out you can send it into Matt plus puzzles at standupmaths.com. You have to put in plus puzzles to make sure that we see it and the kind of extra extra extension this is not even directly related to what we've been talking about. There are infinitely many ones in Pascal's triangle because it never ends. However, that's the only number, also I guess excluding the ocean of zeros, which there are infinitely many of. For every other number, there must only be a finite number of occurrences of them. And you can prove that very hand-wavingly because a number can't appear in a row bigger than its value. So, uh, so the 127th row, the 128 rows that we're using, you, the numbers uh, below that can't appear after that. So you, you'll never see 128 in a row after the 128th row, or uh, you never see a thousand in a row after the thousandth row, right? So every number at some point could no longer appear because all the numbers in that row and below have to be bigger than the row number. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Ah, you'll work it out. There's a conjecture called the Singmaster conjecture that the number of times that any number will appear, excluding one and zero, has itself a finite bound. So even though the row numbers get bigger and bigger, and so plausibly the number of times each number could appear could get bigger and bigger, it doesn't. And we don't know, first of all, if that's true. It was conjectured by David Singmaster in uh, 1971. We also don't know what that bound is. It must be eight. We know that the number 3003 appears eight times, so it's got to be at least eight, and Singmaster guessed at the time that it's probably around 10 or 12, but we don't know. And next year will be half a century since that original conjecture, and I think it's crazy that no one else has actually found any other numbers which appear more often than 3003. So when I, actually, when I was writing my code, to where I was playing around with this puzzle myself, of course, I very quickly got it to spit out all the occurrences of 3003. They're in the, uh, from memory, the 14th, 15th, 78th, and 3003rd rows. And that's the, the row number if you start counting from zero for the first row. Ugh, oh, confusing. And there are two in each of those rows. So four rows, twice each, eight of them. That's it. That's the only one we know of. And so I'll probably do a proper video on this maybe next year when it's the 50th anniversary, but I thought I'd just mention it here. If anyone else can find anything else interesting 
like doing a either a clever or an exhaustive search in Pascal Triangle's numbers, send it in to matpluspuzzles at standupmath.com. Please put the word Singmaster in it, which means I can find it easier if I'm searching afterwards, and we won't close these. So everything else we close at the end of Tuesday. If you want to send in Singmaster conjecture working out for the rest of the year, go for it. And maybe next year I'll do a proper video on it. Just thought I'll bring it up here. I think it's interesting that despite the incredible increases in computing power over the last 50 years, no one has found a number which appears eight or more times since uh, we discovered 3003 50 years ago. Come on, surely we can do better. Or maybe it's massive. I'll link to the Wikipedia page on Singmaster Conjecture. It's a pretty good starting point if you want to look into it. And for everyone else, I hope you just enjoy the puzzle. Good luck.